Good morning. Um, so today uh, I just want to do a little bit more work on um, Snippet Pixie Next with the upcoming version of Wales. Um, I, I just want to try out a couple of things, see if I can um, improve Snippet Pixie's code a little bit um, to take advantage of the new stuff that's coming up. So uh, into Goland we go. Oh, I've got a plugin update. What's that? Oh, okay. Do that. So it's good to keep the uh, plugins up to date. Okay. So in my last video, um, I was updating Snippet Pixie to take advantage of some new stuff. So we can, in Wales, sorry. Um, so the Wales App Builder um, now exports functions um, that match the back end uh, functions we have. So if I go to app.go, we've got an add snippet function in the Go code, which takes an abbreviation and body um, and returns a snippet or error. Um, and in this case, it's just calling a dbus service to add the snippet, which then talks to the snippet pixie daemon that I've got running in the background. Um, and now with the new version of Wales, um, it creates a JS file, um, which is basically it's generated JavaScript versions of that. Um, that's a nice little wrappers. Um, to the main um, bindings to those functions. So um, here you have an add snippet, it takes two arguments um, and returns something from this actual function, which presumably I could find somewhere, probably in the runtime, eh? Maybe not. But I'm not bothered, it's fine. Um, so uh, we took advantage of that um, in the last one. Um, so we're now using that function there. We also create, have a show error, which shows a native error dialog. Um, and what else did we do? I think, oh yeah, in the screen, which is like a wrapper, for every Svelte screen that we have in the front end, this uh, HTML and Go desktop app, we're using ping, uh, which was another function in the back end here, uh, which just does, as it says, pin expects Pong or another supplied response from the DBus server. So it's just a way to make sure it's up and running, just to see. So with that, um, we should have, I guess we should probably just double check everything's up and running. Uh, I think the daemon should still be running. Yeah, the daemon's up and running still. That's good. That's been up and running for... Well, since... Five days, that's cool. It's a good little test, that. Um, so, in theory, I should be able to just do Wales dev here. Oh, Wales IJ, because I created a override to use the new version. Forgot about that. And as you can see, um, it's up and running and I can do an ad. Let's see what we've got. Uh, we did Wales. 
Um, if I do a quick, so yeah, so got a Wales V2 rules. Let's do another sort of Wales related one. Um, Wales IJ. This was created with an overlay version of Wales. Save that. Do a list in the back end with the CLI. And we now got the Wales IJ. So good. That's cool. That's working. Right, I'll kill that off. Um, actually, no, we leave that there. So, um, one thing now that we've got the shorter syntax um, for add snippet. I also think it'd be nice to take advantage of uh, my preferred way of doing JavaScript calls to promise, uh, which is using async await. Um, I'm not a big fan of this then and then catch stuff. Um, if you saw my video a few, um, couple of back, um, oh, actually it's probably even the last one, no, a little while back. Um, I struggled um, just even remembering how to do that uh, because I don't use it. I don't use the then catch method at all. So um, I'm going to switch this up um, and I'm going to, this is all going to be, this is all kind of semi-temporary at the moment because um, Wales, the, these changes that I'm using in Wales aren't actually released yet. Um, so in my environment and so on, it's all temporary um, and I can't commit this and push it up because who knows, things might change before these, this version of Wales actually um, gets released. So we're just experimenting for a little bit here. So uh, let's change this up. Um, what we want to do is we want I'll just comment this out and then I'll have a little reminder of what we've got to do. Thank you. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to well, I could do a const I'm not going to change it. Um, and it will be <clears throat> a snippet. And it's going to be the result of a wait and snippet with the abbreviation and body. Now, because I've got no wait there, I need to tell, I need to say that this function is async. And because this could be rejected, I need to wrap it. So I'm going to do a try catch. And here, I'm going to rename that to error because it makes more sense. And then in here, we're going to do basically what we did up there. Um, we're just going to call show error. And then I'm just going to steal this, actually, this internal stuff here. So I don't do it wrong. That. Ah, of course. Um, 
Um, and then here we should. Well, we've got two options. We could do the pop here because we're not really caring about the snippet that we're going to get returned. Or we could do a return after the, the show error and then do a pop at the end and use the snippet and stuff like that. I think for the time being, all we need to do is the pop. So we'll do that. Here. Oh, and now I've got to do a wait again. That's it. So in theory, we've now got a more classic setup for that. Um, okay, so I should probably give that a quick test and I'll I'll probably try and concoct an error as well to make sure that works as well. So we'll save that off. And do a Wales IJ. Okay. So we'll do one that works, hopefully. Actually, we can do one that fails straight away, I hope. So, Wales, I think it was IJ, wasn't it? Was my, yeah, that was IJ, back tick. This should fail. We should get an error dialog now, if it's working. We did. Unique constraint failed. Snippets abbreviation. Obviously, we need to do more work here to improve all this catching stuff. And we'll probably do that at some point where we pass errors and stuff. And then if I do Wales IJ, this should pass. Should just get it popped back. Okay, that's cool. At some point, we'll have a list here of snippets, but we haven't got that far yet. Okay, so that's working. Um, and then in the screen, we've got this usage here where, again, we're using then. And then a catch and stuff. So let's change this up. Um, we want... It's a little more complicated. So what we'll do actually there's no there's no there's no side effect apart from setting variables and the potential at this time to log in error. So there's no reason to escape early or anything. So um, we can do it as uh, in the same way. So we will do try we can have a catch. And then here, we're going to, I'm just hacking at it at the moment. We're going to have const. Result. 
equals await. If the result equals pong, we're going to do that. Else, we're going to do that. So we've got a try. So we have const result equals await, blah, blah, blah. Oh, stop it. Thank you. Async. And then presumably, this is not happy. Oh, interesting. Why is that? Now, is that a change? Or is it just not resolving? Because we're not importing it anymore. It would be nice that that was recognized. So I wonder if there's a way. Can I just do a whales? Long time. I guess so. looks like it, doesn't it? So I should be able to do the same thing that I've done with my functions to import specific runtime functions as well. That would be nice. Let's do that. So we want log error there. That's all. So we're going to do Import log error. There we go. Now I'll take out that dot js. Hopefully that'll work. Mind you. Dot JS there as well. Don't need to though, do I? One good thing about using the .js is that if I were to say switch to TypeScript, I would have a clear indicator of where I need to do any updates for review and so on. It might be a bit of grunt work, but yeah. It does make it very explicit as to what you're doing and what you're using. Okay. I'm going to switch back to using .js. Just for safety, really. Okay. So we're importing log error now. So let's go use it. So I presume I'm going to have to do an await here. No, that's interesting. So it obviously doesn't do a... Right, because that's promise. That's not. Well, of course, that means my ping was as well, then. Not ping. Oh, yeah. Ping was. Show error. Am 
wonder if I could, um, well, I suppose it does need to be. I was just wondering whether it needs to have a promise return, but it does because Hmm. I wonder why it returns a promise when it doesn't actually do a return. That's interesting. Although it does here. That's possibly the reason why, and only reason. Hmm, okay. Let's... Right, let's finish up what I was doing. So I was working in screen. Uh, so what we're doing is we're doing the ping, uh, which is just checking the daemons up and running. And then we're getting a result back and we hope it says Pong because that's the default. Well, in fact, we're explicitly saying Pong, please. Uh, we're going to set the store of connection OK to true if it works and otherwise false. And then we're going to log an error. And we're going to log an error there. And these log errors show up in the the terminal rather than uh, the web front end of the desktop app. So, okay, let's um, give that a go, I guess. Let's see what we can do here. So we run Wells Dev. Run my override version. And then we're going to so that's up and running already, the ping. So let's go kill it. Which might be a mistake, because now that I've got... Oh no, it's compiled, so it's okay. We're fine. So that's gone now. And there we go. So we're getting the message now. Which comes up. Because of this, no connection notice. And then in the error in the terminal we're getting this. Ping returned. The name com blah 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 was not provided by any service files. Okay. And then if I go back and start up the daemon again. There it goes. Now it's clean again. Okay. So that's good. All right, so using um, async await is fine with the promises and the stuff going on there. Um, so I can use my preferred try catch method because I very rarely change the stuff. So this is um, sort of kind of kind of queued up. Um, now, anything else that I can fix up. I don't think we really need to do much else just now. I think that's quite handy that we can now use an import of the runtime methods as well as our own. Um, I think I think we're good. We're not doing anything with that snippet yet. I don't think we need to at the moment. We're going to have... Um, have a refresh on the front end as soon as we're done. 
So I don't think I need to muck about with that just yet. I think we're kind of good. Um, in the model, what have we got? Yeah, we've got ID is a number. Okay, it's an array of number because of the UUID. And then we have the abbreviation of string, body of string, and then it's not recognizing, well, it understands that that's a time time, but we can't cast that to any JavaScript type, so it's going as any, which is fine. Um, so these are properties on the snippet class. Um, and then it's got uh, these functions that we have hanging off of it. So if we look at the snippet here, where is it? Snippet, snippet. You see that we've got struct here. Um, and we added these JSON tags beforehand. Um, and you can see that we have... Uh, actually, no, that's all done a minute. Oh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. These are created by whales. They're not mapping to mine. So these are quite handy, I wonder. So that's what it's using, I guess. Right, okay, so if you pass in a JSON, a lump of JSON, it's going to try and check for, well, it's going to basically pass it and pull out the uh, values. Well, this is interesting. So, if we pass in, so this is this. Passing in last used. Oh, in this case, it's probably going to fall straight through to here. Just return the value. Hmm. Let's um. Let's see what it actually does there. Let's. I'll console to log that here. I want to see what it does with this value now. We'll do um do that. And now I want to find out, so I should be able to go there, there we are, this should work now, oh it's not, ah, okay, that's a shame, I thought it did. Yeah, okay, so it works with that, but then I don't get the, um, the back end stuff working. That's a shame.
Mm. Okay. Anyway, um, console. Okay. What I'm going to do is I will remove. Oh, I forgot the moment. Got those. Let's get rid of the whales by J ones. So if we list them, that's okay. I'm going to cheat with that. And then back here, if I do an add. I'll do Wales IJ. Let's see what we get back. Okay. Oh, it's a zero anyway. Because we're not setting it. Which I guess is okay. But it is interesting that the ID was thought of as an array of number but was converted back into a string of hexadecimal Interesting. And does it match? Uh, so let's have a look. If we list. Yeah. Two F D twelve. Yeah. For an nine B zero one. Yeah, it's all the same. That's interesting. That that um. Get shot of that. And we'll close that off as well. Okay. Oh, I'm just going to take that out again because I don't need that for the moment. Okay, I think that's all I really want to do today. Um, I just wanted to switch to using try catch. Um, and just make sure that I'm using the functions correctly. And having the short form show ever now, that's handy. I think for the time being, I need to kind of leave it be. Um, and then when the next version of Wales comes out, I can probably package it up um, and start using it and commit my changes and so on but for today that's all i really wanted to do um, so uh, thanks for watching um, and until next time take care